Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, as just said, my name is Sam Flick. Um, I'm working for the company called MD Group. Um, I've the, I, I'm the sales manager for Europe, uh, working at MD Group now for eight years, and um, I'm taking care of the sales in our group for Microdrone, for GOQ, LP360. And um, in this next minutes, I would like to give a, um, yeah, a quick introduction on uh, hardware and uh, um, combination of hardware and software. Um, and what does it mean um, an integrated LiDAR solution to have? Um, I don't know uh, how is it on your side. I am attending the Intergeo since 2016, somewhere maybe longer, some less. But um, in 2016, we had like some, some drones, I would say. Now it's totally different. We see a lot of drones, a lot of photogrammetry sensors, LiDAR sensors, solutions. And uh, I ask myself sometimes, OK, what is, what is the real value of a, of a LiDAR solution or of a photogrammetry solution? And honestly speaking, is uh, when I discuss with our clients or with the requests we have, it's all about, um, I would say, the data, what you get at the end and what the task is. So if you have a project which is full flat, is like an easy surface, and um, you can do easily with photogrammetry, um, on the other side, you have like um, projects where you have vegetation inside, very uh, detailed um, areas, where it's like walls or something like this, where it's good to have a LiDAR sensor as well, because you have some, uh, is another method uh, for uh, capturing data. And, um, but it's not just buying a sensor, putting it on the M300 or whatever drone, fly and that's it. It's uh, some more things inside to consider. And um, yeah, this is uh, what I would like to show. And um, I can tell uh, as a small spoiler, uh, stop by our booth. Uh, if you want to have like some more deeper discussion, we have our technicians there uh, regarding software or hardware or projects. Um, so we are happy to help here. Uh, what is the benefit of LiDAR? And uh, next slide would be benefits of photogrammetry. Uh, we have put some together. Uh, try to be very objective, but um, you're able to um, have like a detailed 3D mapping. Um, LiDAR is based on active measurements. It's not like calculated like with photogrammetry. So if you shot a point, you have it, it's measured. It's uh, measured by light, so you know, the, the LiDAR sensor, sensor sends it out and calculates the way back, and then uh, you know how far it is from the, from the sensor. So you have like um, this as a, um, a direct measurement. Then you are independent from lightning. Uh, most at the time when you go for a photogrammetry drone or use the photogrammetry sensor, um, you are dependent on the lightning situation. So if you have like a very sunny day, big shadows, um, this can create problems at the end because in the shadows, because it's dark, you are missing some uh, uh, information. Um, with LiDAR, is the opposite. You can even fly in uh, or do it in uh, dark areas um, and get good data. We have the vegetation, penetra uh, sorry, vegetation penetration. Um, as we don't have to calculate out of pictures, out of a lot of pictures, the LiDAR helps to, what we saw also before, to uh, look on the ground. It's not shooting through leaves or trees or whatever. It's looking just where it finds a sp free spot. It will go um, through it, and you have your direct measurement. And afterwards, with uh, good software, you can um, classify it and get your ground or whatever is needed. Um, the precise distant measurement I uh, spoke already. And you have a quick data acquisition um, with LiDAR and a good IMU on, uh, on the LiDAR system. You will be able to fly at, depends on the project and uh, what, how many data you need, uh, you, you would be able to fly at 20 or 30% overlap. Um, photogrammetry most of the time requires like 60% overlap or up to 80%. Uh, percent. So the uh, flight time will be less. Um, and uh, yeah, that saves at the end um, time in the field and also for processing. Um, by the way, processing is missing here, but um, to process a LiDAR point cloud takes us with colorization, for example, like 20 to 30 minutes. Then you do the classification. We have to look a little bit uh, deeper in it. It's like the algorithms are able today to classify like 
90, 95% of the data set. And then you have to check because it's like it looks good in the in the in the in the beginning, but uh, you, you still need to have a look and to maybe reclassify and uh, yeah to uh, to get a good result at the end. Benefits of the photogrammetry is um, the resolution is higher um, because you have like if you have a very good camera like a full frame camera, 42 megapixels or higher um, with the GSD, you get a lot of points. Um, that would be one good benefit. Then it's for sure at lower cost. Uh, we saw DJI before. If you get an M3E or whatever they are called, you are at, I don't know, two, three thousand euros, and you can get good results. Um, and then you have the color and the texture. Just to show it in a, in a small, uh, well, like a small overview, um, as an as a sum up, um, I think the, the most, um, the most advantage of the LiDAR is the, uh, that you have the vegetation at the end. All surfaces is, is one thing, but uh, I think to look through vegetation is a good point uh, where you can add some quality and some uh, data to your data set. Um, because both um, systems has their uh, advantages, we at GeoQ, we um, um, yeah, do both. At the end, we have the sensor like this one, the uh, Truview 535, where we um, have the um, Hisai Panda M2X, for instance, and uh, three photogrammetry cameras uh, to capture both um, data sets. So now it's very difficult with the, uh, with the microphone, but uh, you see here why it's three cameras. We have one uh, camera Nadia looking. We have two cameras Opli looking. Why? Uh, we use up to 120 degrees field of view of the LiDAR scanner. And you will not find a good camera at an acceptable price today, uh, which gives you a 100 degree field of view with a um, good, resolu or with a good um, data outcome at the end. So that's why we use the uh, oblique um, mounting to um, get when we capture a data set to get 100 degrees field of view and to get uh, both um, data combined at the end. So if you go with the LiDAR at 120 degrees field of view and wants to do also photogrammetry job, you can fly the same uh, flight pattern and don't have to go back and do uh, like the 60 or 80 percent for photogrammetry overlap. So if you go for 30 percent is absolutely good enough to get both photogrammetry and the LiDAR point cloud. Uh, by the way, um, IMU is also a topic. Uh, we integrate an APX15 from Aplanix uh, inside uh, to get also there the best uh, data quality for the, uh, to serve the sensor and the data set at the end. Who we are? We are a GeoQ company, um, M or it's an MD Group company, but uh, we included is GeoQ, MD Group, LP360, what I said before, we are working in uh, Europe, in US, in Brazil, um, in France, so not all over the world, but in uh, some parts. <laughs> and um, the main products, what we do is um, the LiDAR sensors plus software. Because software, um, or to say in other words, just to have a good LiDAR sensor, which by the way, a lot of people have, it's not good enough. At the end of the day, you have a point cloud, you have, the, you have the pictures, you have the IMU data, and you need to get something out. It's good to have a nice flying drone, it's good to have uh, the data and good looking data set, but this is not what the end customer needs. For example, we flew, or one of our partners flew a project in Denmark uh, of 25 kilometers of railways, and uh, he used the, uh, the uh, previous product, the 515, um, with cameras, he had a good point cloud and everything was nice and I was super excited about good accuracies and uh, author photo and everything perfect. But the end customer, he needed just cross sections. So what he delivered was like 1000 PDFs with uh, uh, just cross sections and have like a um, comparison between what should be as built and, uh, and what, what was built. So yes. Um, we are working with HISI sensors, we are working with legal sensors, really depending on the need of the client. So at the end of the day, it depends all what the job is and what the project is, and then we can see what sensor would fit to, the, uh, to this need. 
as I said, is not just this, it's also the um, software, and I think my colleague will later show a little bit more on the software side, um, but we developed uh, 20 years ago, started to develop a software called LP360, where you can uh, process all the raw data from the sensor, the cameras, APX, to a LAS file, you do the uh, strip adjustment, you can do classification, smoothing, volume calculations, DTMs, contour lines, and a lot, a lot of other things. Um, by the way, if you're interested, we can do a quick demo also on the booth. Uh, we have the software running there and a technician who can, uh, can help with that. Um, and it's not just for our own sensors. We also open it up. So if you fly today, for example, the L1, and you want to get rid of um, misalignments in the, in the data set, you can come to us and we show you how we, uh, how we work with that and also apply other um, EPSG codes to the uh, data set and so on. So if that is a problem today, you are invited to come to our booth and we show you um, how we can deal with that. A few things to consider when purchasing a LiDAR. So I know that it's not necessarily only us on the market, but uh, when you go in the, and to purchase a LiDAR, there are a few things to consider. Uh, first is what I mentioned already, is the field of view of the LiDAR and the camera. So if you find someone having a, a both, take care about the field of view of the camera. Because if you want to do both LiDAR and photogrammetry and you don't want to switch the sensors, it's better to have, um, have an understanding of the field of view of the camera because that impacts directly the efficiency of the project. Because if you want to do both, you have to uh, adjust your flight pattern and let's say can create a lot of um, more time to fly and also to process. Then a uh, reminder about accuracy and precision. Um, one thing is uh, accuracy is, to explain in very small words, is the spot I am um, measuring at the moment, is that on the right place? Is it where it has to be? And the precision is how often, or let's say if I, if I measure it 10 times, is it really on the same spot? And we don't care about where it is. So this is also to consider because, um, okay, the best would be you have an accurate system and a precise system that goes directly into the, into the pocket, I would say. It's uh, quite caustic, uh, it's quite expensive, but um, just to keep in mind to, uh, to, uh, to, to look after it as well and to not just say, okay, uh, it's very accurate, but the precision is bad, for example. Um, then you have accuracy testing. I will uh, skip this slide, um, but uh, it's good to have, if you, if you are dealing with a manufacturer, it's good to have some samples and to see, okay, is there a client or a data set or some, something where they can prove the accuracy on, for example, external measured points uh, from a survey mapping office, and so and so, it depends. Um, with GeoQ, what we did uh, on our side is we have, um, invented um, a thing called Accuracy Star. Um, Accuracy Star uh, gives you the ability to measure precisely not just the Z axis, but also the X and Y. Why I'm saying that today, if you are looking at a LiDAR point cloud and you don't have colors or something, and you have, for example, a checkered board, black and white, you have a spot in the middle where you put your GPS or whatever on it to, to, to say, okay, this is the coordinate. So you fly with the drone and you want to say something about the accuracy. You can easily do it in Z because you have, for example, a flat surface. You see the point and you can just measure it. So let's say it's five centimeters, fine. But you are not able to see in the point cloud the small dot because the point cloud is not as uh, dense like photogrammetry. Um, so you, it's kind of a guess. So what the accuracy star does is um, it has uh, this white uh, small plates the software will recognize it. It's on, um, on a measured uh, distance. It will not change. You put your base station on top of it, and then uh, the software can exactly tell you where the X and Y accuracy is, um, and you uh, readjust the point cloud if needed, and so on and so on. But this is a good solution to um, say definitely something about X and Y, and not just a guess. One thing as well is the slant, uh, slant range. So today if you purchase a LiDAR sensor and they say, or we say, I don't know, it's like 80 meters uh, you can, uh, of use, um, 80 meters with 20% uh, reflectivity, uh, for example, um, we always talk about nadir. 
but if you are running a 90 uh, degree field of view with the LiDAR, you have uh, this length range and it's like, I think here in this example we say from 75 meters you have like 106 meters at the edge. So if you have a sensor which is able to fly at 80 meters, you cannot fly at 75 meters at the end because you will get bad data uh, at the, at the uh, edge of the, of the data set. This is one thing to consider as well. Um, then we have something called beam divergence. Um, this is how the laser beam is um, spread on the ground depending on the flight height. So if you have like a good LiDAR sensor like Regal for example, it will be very, very thin. Um, if it's the quality is not as good, um, it will get bigger and bigger. Um, it's not necessarily a problem, but you have to consider if it's like just a flat surface, is good. Because, okay, and if you have like, a, for example, like a 48 or a 22 or whatever centimeters uh, a point and it's a flat surface, you have, you know, you don't care where, this, where the point is, it's just this, uh, this value. But if you go on edges, for example, or details, etc., cetera, it's, uh, you want to know where this edge is and you don't want to, want to estimate or something. So beam divergence is uh, a thing also to consider and to look at when you want to purchase a LiDAR sensor. Um, yes, and maybe last uh, thing to consider is uh, what we see also on Intergeo today is like, is the sensor also able to go for mobile mapping? Uh, I would call it a little bit critical because mobile mapping when you see MX-9 or from Trimble or something is like very, very high end. Um, I think this is just an addition um, to, the, um, uh, to the flights. For example, we had one project with a client due to German um, uh, permissions, he was not able to fly over the autobahn. Um, so what he did is like he flew as, as, far, as uh, close as possible to the autobahn and then put the mobile mapping sensor on top of the uh, car to get the rest of the data. So I, I see, <laughs> I will finish uh, directly. So um, this is in summary, stop by the booth, you can get the presentation if you like. Um, thank you for having me and uh, yeah, hall, hall 1.2 and uh, you will find GOQ there. Thank you very much.